All right, so you have ditched big tech, Windows, Apple, Mac, whatever, and uh, we are here at Linux Mint. And uh, this is going to be a quick overview of a startup or a quick startup guide uh, if you are being introduced to Linux for the first time or if you just want some more information. So this is the welcome screen you will see upon booting your uh, Linux Mint machine. And uh, you're welcome to run through these. Uh, very simple first steps, uh, looking at desktop callers, system snapshots, driver manager, update manager, and so on. Uh, we will come back to some of these and explain them. Um, but first, let us uh, we want to look at your system up to date. You'll see a little icon down here. And if you click on that, this will be your update manager. So if there's ever um, notifications down there, you have updates to install. Uh, let's first just quickly look at this update manager. Go to your edit and preferences. And it is currently not set uh, to adequately automatically update. That is easily to do if you would like to is complete preference. Um, so if you don't want to worry about uh, updating those packages uh, when update updates come, uh, just to want to be done automatically, then just simply type in your um, password there and um, click that over and you'll be good to go. If you want your manual updates, fine. Just click that back off. Let's get out of here. It's gonna be done anytime. That's not to be the right to start up. Just wanted to show you off to, uh, to get things started. So uh, let's look at, uh, you see this is kind of small down here. Sometimes it even be even smaller on a big screen, a 17 inch. Uh, what I'm running here is just a 14 inch. Um, so the size is okay for me, but if you did want to change that, go to your panel settings or just uh, right click on your uh, panel down here, bottom panel, and go to panel settings. And you can adjust the size of your icons and panel size. Like for example, this is your left zone. Your right zone is over here. Uh, center zone, obviously center, but we don't have anything there. So let's first look at the right zone. They're kind of small. Let's go ahead and put that at 24. And you can adjust this up and down, and the size of your icons will change. Similar to the left side, scale the pan panel size optimally. Let's do exactly. And you see this, it doesn't give as much um, buffer uh, in between the, the top of your icon and the, uh, the top of your panel here. So again, that it was right here optimally or just an easy way easy way of making bigger okay it's just simply click on exactly um you can adjust the size of that as well all right enough of that there and let's look at if your overall font size is too small um again just right click on your main screen and actually easiest way uh, just left click like you would normally Okay, this is where a lot of, where your menu is, a lot of your items are stored, uh, apps and so on, system settings. Uh, just type in fonts, font selection. The very easy way is just scale it up to whatever you like. And just close out that and you're done with that. Uh, you can also, if I stayed in there, uh, as far as your styles, your default font if you want uh, whatever to change that so simple go bold if you like all right so okay there's that if you want to let's look at next thing is where do you like to get your um, software or your apps that is with the software manager so again, if you just go under here, the little LM logo, Linux Mint uh, logo, and um, if you just click on this here, it's your software manager. Type in whatever you're looking for. Let's go ahead and install Brave. Continue. All right, so that's installed. 
uh, you can go ahead and uh, launch. You don't need to at this point, but uh, I'll just make sure everything function here. And there you have it. Uh, one thing to do down here currently, we only have Firefox, um, which is okay. Uh, there are better web browsers. Uh, Brave I feel is uh, better. But anyway, that's uh, whatever preference there is. I just want to show you. You can go find, again, left click LM logo, and you can find Brave here. You can also find it through, if you look at under internet, yep, it should be there as well. Okay, here's your main um, folders here. And that's what here's what's under your folders on the right side. So if you right click on Brave, uh, you can add it to the panel and that will add it to the panel down below us. There we go. If you like, you can simply remove, unpin uh, Firefox from there. All right. So there is how to uh, use a software manager to install uh, programs. Uh, again, there's, I didn't show this in the first time, but he, I mean, you can, there, here's your categories. There's a slew of open source software that's available that can replace anything you've ever had on Windows or Mac. So there's that. All right, coming back to the uh, welcome screen, uh, this will come up until you, or this will come up on each boot until you uncheck this. All right, so we do not want this to show up the next time. You can simply leave that up as long as you like. It'll come up every time you reboot. If you're getting started, I might be helpful. Um, what I showed you before was uh, to uh, not using this, um, but this simply, this is a great way to start is uh, look at your desktop colors. Um, oh, there it goes, a little slow. It's mixed, dark, light, simple. System, system snapshots, you will uh, want to uh, launch this and go through the wizard. Type in your password. And just hit the next button. Do not say finish yet. We want the rest of this to set up. And how this is currently set as far as the location um, is going to go to your hard drive. That is not the best situation, uh, but it is not in the scope of this video, um, the the best situation is you want to save these on an external hard drive, but it needs to be uh, partitioned correctly to be able uh, to have a snapshot uh, of your hard drive um, saved to that. For example, an external hard drive um, or like a, a USB flash drive. Anyway, we will do this on here to see you have the gist of it. Get next. See, this is a 250 gigabyte um, hard drive on this computer. Daily, this is complete preference. Um, personally, I just keep one daily and uh, I want one on each boot up. And again, this is what acts up, acts like uh, Windows Backup and Restore. Um, so here's what we're gonna do. And, um, okay. select include all files if you wish or hidden files only of the rest of your non-root items of your normal um, you know documents and all that good stuff next okay finish and you want to create okay there you have it the uh, snapshot or the backup has been created and uh, it took about uh, 40 or so gigabytes of space, which isn't too much. And you could all be, if you have more than one snapshot, they'll, they'll all show up here. It's good only to keep, I mean, you only need one. Um, the more you have, the more space is gonna fill up on your hard drive. That's, it's wise to put it on a separate external hard drive or USB drive. And I'll have a little video, video on that uh, some other point. Um, because if your computer crashes, your hard drive fails, obviously you cannot get to your backup, which doesn't make much sense. And um, there's that. Uh, driver manager, uh, you just need to see if there's any updates on your additional drivers. Um, typically this is uh, done by itself or automatically uh, when you have updates to your drivers. There shouldn't, I've never seen an update to a driver yet. 
every time I've tried this. So that was fine. The driver's needed. Okay. Update manager, we already showed you that. Uh, again, it's just down here, it's a little shield. System settings. Here's everything. It's just another way to get into it. Software manager, we looked at it as well. Okay, remember it's over here. Software manager. There's your firewall. Okay, so go ahead and enable the firewall. And uh, so it's important to you assess your security needs. And um, but with this, uh, the firewall is provided with us. Uh, it gives us three distinct profiles, the, uh, the home, public, and office. And uh, so let's briefly go through each one of those. Uh, you just select the configuration that's most suitable to your environment. Um, so for the home profile, um, that's uh, connected to a trusted home network. And uh, it, it's a good, you know, it strikes a good balance between security and convenience. And uh, it's suitable for day-to-day -day use uh, within your home environment. And for the office selection uh, or profile, it is uh, it's designed for users uh, working in a corporate office, uh, you know, network environment. And this would be a stricter firewall setup uh, to ensure sensitive corporate uh, data is protected. And in the public profile, this is the most secure. It's intended for public Wi-Fi connections and networks uh, against the strictest firewall setup, which is to maximize security. Um, you can also customize uh, these as well under Edit and Preferences. You can uh, alter or delete profiles to your specific needs. You can dig into that. Um, again, this, uh, this video is to just give you a quick startup overview. Uh, we can dive in the depths of these, uh, but please self-govern and assess your security needs and what you um, and the, the environment that you intend to use uh, your Linux system. That is it for the welcome screen. Uh, let's look at now um, LibreOffice which comes with Linux Mint and pretty much uh, I'd say most Linux distributions and if you go to Office and so this is replaces all of your, there's no need for Word, PowerPoint, or, or any of your Microsoft products, Word, Microsoft Excel, um, drawing and all that stuff. So uh, here's your Excel, here's your uh, drawing in Office drawing, whatever it's called, uh, PowerPoint essentially, and uh, here's Word in a way. So LibreOffice Writer, that's what it looks like here. Uh, it might take a little bit getting used to. It's very similar to Word, uh, but a very, very, very good resource. That is free. Free open source software. It's wonderful. All right. Uh, so I want to show you with the looking at the LibreOffice. Let's go under folders. And I created a document. And let's go under documents. Uh, here's that document. If you want to start adding uh, shortcuts and stuff to your main screen, just simply move or copy that file uh, or a shortcut to something else and simply paste it on your desktop. There are probably other ways, but this is the simplest way um, that I'm aware of currently. All right, there's uh, getting started. I'll show you some other resources quickly. Um, so <clears throat> you can go directly to the websites or have them on my uh, resource page under getprivacyfreedom.me or .com. If you go to resources tab and just scroll down to either one of these, privacy guides or privacy tools. These are two very, very highly resourced, uh, highly recommended um, pages or web sites to go to to check them out. Uh, let's look at privacy tools real quick. Just 
uh, shows you virtual private networks, uh, private private browsers, emails, uh, cloud storage options, and they have specific requirements to make it on their page. Uh, so that's uh, very uh, very good for us privacy minded folk. Um, <clears throat> also, there is the privacy guides, which is here uh, similar, uh, but they have done their research and have similar similar information here. Uh, so yeah, just, just play around with the photo management, uh, email services, and so on. So there you have it, quick uh, start guide to Linux Mint. Hope this is helpful. And uh, just keep uh, on your privacy freedom journey uh, and that's never ending. Uh, there's so much exciting things in the open source world. And uh, once we start exiting the uh, the system that enslaved us, uh, we begin. Well, we make that uh, the switch over to start building our own things and investigating the, uh, the things that make us free, that uh, respects our privacy, and the, the find the right people that are like minded and the right companies, the entities that all are doing the same thing. And uh, that is, we want our rights, we want our uh, freedoms, and we want our data. It is our property. It's our private property. Um, and that is that. It is no one else's.